Bridge Square did not always look as it does now, with a fountain, a war memorial, and in the summer, a popcorn wagon. And the square isn't square. More about that in a bit. For many years, the square was a dusty or muddy expanse of dirt, sometimes filled with wagons, community gatherings, and often with children at play. There was even a building in the middle of it for a while. It has always been a center of town activity. Northfield owes its existence to a set of rapids on the Cannon River. These rapids made it possible to build two water-powered mills that made flour and sawed lumber. The tall building across the river, the Ames Mill, is where multi-meal hot cereal is now made. Another flour mill on this side of the river was torn down shortly after World War I. John North founded Northfield in 1855 and conceived the plans for how the city was to be laid out. He hired a Minneapolis surveyor to do the actual work. They placed the new town on this, the east side of the river, and chose this area next to the mills as their starting point. North and his surveyor laid out Division Street, the main business street in town so that it runs due south from one side of the square and at an angle parallel to the cannon as it goes northerly. This decision in the angle of the bridge over the cannon resulted in the unsquare shape of the open space that became known as Mill Square. It was essentially the city's first parking lot, a convenient place to park wagons taking material to and from the mills on both sides of the river. As you can see in this photograph from the 1880s, the square sloped down to the river quite a bit. When it rained, the square turned into rivers of mud. It was a mess. Wagons got stuck and people crossing the square ended up slipping and falling or stomping around in boots caked with mud. No doubt the horses contributed a few things to this mess, too. When the square was not a sea of mud or a dust bowl, it was a farmer's market of sorts, a place where local farmers sold produce from their wagons. Some called it the wood market because people also sold hay and wood there. In the late 1880s, a fountain was installed in the center of the square, not to decorate the area, but to provide water for all the horses. The fountain stayed there until roughly 1910. Also by the late 80s, the square and most of the streets in the downtown area had been surfaced with rock and dirt. They were oiled sometimes, so their surface was pretty hard. Wooden boardwalks laid out across the square made it safer to walk there, but dust was still a big problem. To keep it down, streets were periodically watered. Here's an 1895 photograph of the square. Notice the horse-drawn watering wagon in the middle. It looks like they've just finished watering the square and the streets. Citizens started talking about beautifying the square as early as the 1890s. Writing to the local paper, one said, By raking up the hay and closing the wood market, the square could be made more pleasant in appearance. The Northfield Improvement Association and the Booster Club began campaigns to improve the space. There was talk of building a pavilion in the square, but it never materialized. Over the years, this square has also seen its share of parades and demonstrations. It was from here that Northfield celebrated its veterans, sent soldiers off to World War I, and here that it welcomed them home. Grand parades passed through it in the days when the Rice County Fair was held in Northfield, and there were concerts and other gatherings, as this 1910 picture shows. In 1939, the Crown Prince of Norway visited Northfield and St. Olaf College, and a grand parade was organized in his honor. In the 1970s, 
students from Carleton and St. Olaf Colleges gathered in the square with townspeople for war protests. Peace activists have been holding a vigil there every Saturday at noon for years. The automobile brought a number of changes to the square. The Iron Bridge from 1873 was replaced in 1915 with the concrete arch bridge that you see now. A year later, after the death of General Ames, of the Ames Mills, the city moved to turn the square into a park, fulfilling plans discussed 20 years earlier. The city plans included removing the first Ames Mill on the east side of the river and improving the riverfront. But downtown businessmen had a different idea. Pave it, they said, to provide parking for our customers' cars. And while you're at it, put a service station there too. The idea of creating a park, an island really, in the middle of the square eventually won out. They put a gas station nearby too, where the post office, built in 1936, now stands. This arrangement significantly improved traffic patterns in the area. In 1921, a Civil War memorial was erected in the square, along with a water fountain for people. The circular fountain was added in 1980. It is the work of Carleton College sculptor Ray Jacobson and was donated to the city by the Sheldahl Company in honor of its 25th anniversary. Today, Sheldahl makes flexible electronic circuits for the automobile and telecommunications markets. They are famous for making the Echo One satellite in 1960. This was the very first telecommunications satellite in the world. Bridge Square has long been the hub of downtown business in Northfield. The lots around the square were the first to have substantial businesses built on them. In and around Bridge Square in 1894, for example, were four attorneys, four bakeries, two banks, four barbers, seven blacksmiths, six book and stationery dealers, six dry goods dealers, household goods including cloth and clothing, and six doctors. To the north was the Citizens, or Northfield National Bank. The former Community Resource Bank stands there now. This one-story, concrete-pillared building, built in 1966, is the newest one on the square. Across the street from it, to the northeast on Division, is the first National Bank. Originally located in the Scriver Building when Jesse James tried to rob it in 1876, it moved to its current location in 1893. The east side of the square is dominated by the four-story central block, another story you can listen to if you wish. It was built in 1893. Typical of many of the downtown block buildings, the first floor has been home to businesses selling everything from clothing and dry goods to groceries, sporting goods, and knickknacks. The upper stories have held professional offices and apartments. You'll notice that the central block and the other buildings that face Bridge Square are all brick or stone. The first buildings built on the square were wooden. These were quickly replaced by stone buildings. When brick became readily available in the 1870s and 80s, brick became the preferred building material. Brick was fireproof. That was always a major concern in early towns, and it could also be used to make larger, more substantial buildings. Northfield's downtown, fortunately, never burned. Today, Bridge Square continues to be the center of community activities. In winter, there's winter walk and the opportunity for children to line up outside Santa's house to tell him the presents they want. In summer, the square regularly hosts band concerts, pie-eating contests, milk contests, and programs promoting book reading. During the defeat of Jesse James Days each September, the weekend after Labor Day, Bridge Square is filled with booths selling everything from cheese curds, bratwurst, and pronto pups to gyros, tacos, and Chinese stir-fry. Sports fans from Northfield's two colleges, Carleton and St. Olaf, visit the square each fall as well, after the Battle for the Goat Trophy. 
This is the annual football showdown between these longtime crosstown rivals. By long standing tradition, the eagle on the top of the Civil War monument is always rotated to face in the direction of the college that has won the most recent contest. Where is it looking today? At St. Olaf to the west? Or northeast to Carlton? <laughs>